Welcome everybody. My name is Sarah Gutman. I am a professional genealogist. I went to Marist in Poughkeepsie where I did not study genealogy. Uh, I studied teaching, which is why I like teaching these classes. I have been doing genealogy since 1994. Um, I was 13 years old. I'm 38 years old now. I think that math is correct. Um, so it's one of those things where I would be up late at night and just finding dead people couldn't wait to find more that's how i'd spend my time and i was like you know might as well just go with the all way and go a professional genealogist so um i work for legacy tree the big genealogy firm i also do classes uh, throughout the northeast and um this is one of my favorite things is, is teaching other people how to learn about their family tree and hopefully they'll uh, get that same passion that'll keep you guys later uh, up at up late at night. So um, today we're really going to be focusing on how to get the most out of your ancestry DNA. Now, if you've taken a DNA test with other companies, you can apply um, a lot of this theory to it. And when I say other companies, I'm talking about mainly 23andMe, My Heritage, um, Find My Past, uh, Family Tree all those great things. And I'll also tell you at the end of this, how to upload your DNA to the other websites um, and get your results for free without having to buy a test, but don't tell people I'm telling you that. So it's our secrets. Um, so <clears throat> again, this is pretty much focused on Ancestry. Uh, I do not work for Ancestry. I don't work for any of these companies. All the things that I'm telling you is from my own experience. So if I sound like a commercial, this is you know, I wish someone would throw money at me, but they're not. So this is just my personal experience with this. So first thing to talk about is what's DNA? And I'm going to preface this by saying I am not a scientist and my high school science teachers will tell you that because I barely squeaked by, um, but I do enjoy DNA. So DNA, everybody has it. Uh, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We get, well, most people have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, we get half of those from our mother, half of those from our father. And a gene is a short section of DNA. Um, and we're going, and I'll talk about this again, but these genes, these segments of DNA are measured in CMs, centimorgans, abbreviated like centimeters, but it's a centimorgan. Um, and based on your centimorgans that you have shared with other people, uh, shows how closely you are related to them. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, your gene is a short section of your DNA. So we have a few different types of DNA. So the first one that we'll talk about is autosomal. Um, now, Ancestry tests your autosomal DNA. Now, if you remember from a question, I, or the statement I just said before, we have 23 pairs of DNA. Autosomal DNA is going to check the 22 pairs of DNA that are inside the nucleus of the cell. Um, so again, one copy from mom, one copy from dad. So what does that mean? Um, it means it's testing a lot of your DNA. However, what it's not testing is your <clears throat> X chromosomes and your, I'm sorry, your mitochondrial DNA, and it's not testing your Y chromosome. So Ancestry is not testing those. So that means your mitochondrial DNA is all the ladies out there, you, if you have children, you have passed your mitochondrial DNA to both your sons and your daughters. Um, so my son, I have two sons. Um, they have my, my mitochondrial DNA, but they will not, which makes me very sad, will not pass their mitochondrial DNA onto their children. And you know, you're a genealogist when your cousin tells you, your female cousin tells you that she's having a girl and you're like, and your response is, I'm so glad that you're passing on the family's mitochondrial DNA. And they're like, what the heck are you talking about? But in my head, I'm really excited. Um, so if you're interested in finding and tracing your mother's, 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 mother's line all the way back to what the person we call as mitochondrial Eve, um, you're going to want to take an answer. I'm sorry. You're going to want to take a 23andMe test because they will trace that line back for you. 
Same thing with your Y chromosome. If you are interested in tracing the straight back paternal line, um, fathers, 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 um, you're going to want to get your Y DNA test. Now, ladies, bad news, you do not have Y DNA. So what are you gonna do? Well, um, don't get your son to bother taking it unless you're interested in your uh, significance others because you're gonna get theirs. My son, um, well, my son, when he was five years old, he wanted a DNA test because that's what you know the children of genealogists want when you go away on vacation to these genealogy con conventions. They say, what do you want me to bring back? And he wants a DNA test. So, and I had to write a letter to the teacher that I do know who my son's father is. It is my husband, um, but he wants a DNA test when he's talking about it in school. So anyway, um, my son, from him taking a 23andMe test, he was able to trace my husband's family back. Um, and he shares the same Y chromosomes as Alexander Hamilton. And my son was super excited about that because he has an Alexander Hamilton costume and he loves him. And he's a weird little kid. He's probably gonna get beat up at some point, but whatever, it's cute. Um, so ladies, if you are interested in finding out your family's Y DNA, grab a brother, hopefully you have a brother, um, a father, a male cousin on your father's side, you can get all those people to test that way. Um, it's fun if you have maybe, um, you know, a, your father, he can take it. And then you can have, maybe your mother has a brother, you can have him take it. Um, in case anybody's interesting, DNA tests is my go-to Christmas present for people, whether they want them or not, I'm always getting them DNA. Um, presence. So if you are interested in finding out the paternal paternal line or the maternal maternal line, you're not going to find it through ancestry. That's 23 in me. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the X chromosome that is kind of just thrown in there in that autosomal test, all the tests kind of uh, just test for it in the commercial package. Um, now, it will sound at some points like I am doing a commercial for 23andMe, and that is actually not the case at all. Um, I do have a presentation on 23andMe that I do, and when I was putting it together, I was really disappointed because I was like, this is really hard. Um, it's really hard to understand your results for 23andMe, um, and it's really important to know that 23andMe was not actually created as a family search, family history uh, product. It was a health product to be able to trace your health back um, and see all these genes and characteristics that you have. It's kind of just an added bonus that they're giving you ancestry and family tree. Um, on the flip side, ancestry by its very name is geared to help you connect to family members um, and get that hereditary information and ancestry right now is going the other way and they're trying to get the health information um, for their patrons. So um, I will say that if you were gonna just test with one company, I would do ancestry um, if you're looking for results. Here's a little um, trivia question for everybody. Feel free to come in. Do you, anybody know, does anybody know why or I guess how DNA tests took off. What event happened or whose death happened that these DNA tests became possible to the mainstream media? Hmm. And people who are camera shy, no worries. I'll just spout it out. Um, so if you've ever heard of the Princess Anastasia, there was a lady who had said that she was the Princess Anastasia from the empire of Russia. She claimed that until the day that she died in the 90s, her body was later exhumed and they did DNA tests on this lady and they found that she was not in fact the Princess Anastasia. And that test that they used has morphed into the test that we're using right now. Um, so that's a little fun. If you ever get, you know, on a game show, just remember I told you that, so. So, <clears throat> Why do we bother looking at these DNA results? What's it gonna show us? 
Um, well, DNA can help confirm relationships. Um, it can confirm relationships as closely as parents, brothers, sisters, um, and also help confirm relationships to other members out there and also people from your ancestors connecting it that way. I don't know why I was originally skeptical. I guess this was about in 2014. I was like, eh, I don't need a DNA test. I'm good at researching myself. And I will tell you that I had a ton of brick walls just crumble down around me once I took a DNA test. Because if you want to think about it, we're all getting different pieces of the puzzle from our ancestors, um, You know, different characteristics, different traits. And those ancestors are giving them just like you're thinking about um, certain traits, they're passing along different stories, different information, pictures, documents, whatever, to other family members, um, other of their descendants kind of get them. So by being able to connect to other members um, who share your DNA, you can reach out to them on Ancestry and you can say, hey, you know, we're related this way. Do you happen to have any old photos, any pictures, you know, that you're not sharing any stories? And you will be shocked and amazed, I hope, um, with the amount of stuff that other people have that you never would have guessed. I was able to find my grandmother's cousin on there and she had actually been living in the house of my great, great grandparents um, up until a few years ago. And she had all these fantastic documents from the late 1800s, pictures, um, just everything. And she sends them to me like every now and again. Um, and it's just, I got one the other day and I was like so excited about it. And you just, you just have no idea who you're going to connect with. Um, it's also going to help you discover new areas of tough research questions, um, tough family lines. I was doing, I do these consultations with libraries, um, these one-on-ones. And I was meeting with this uh, lady and she was showing me her DNA results. And she was saying that she had this mystery line that she was trying to trace. And I'm looking at her results and I see my cousin's husband's name on there and his family. And he had told me before that he was looking for this mystery family. I guess like there was a great grandfather who walked out of the family and they never saw him again. And the other person had like, he had a life before we didn't know who he was. So I'm like, I'm just going to stop you right there and get Chris on the phone right now. So I was able to connect them. And it was just like this awesome, like, oh my God, and be able to share stories. And you just never know who you're going to run into. Um, you know, it's really great stuff. Uh, an exciting thing that's coming down the pike in the next three years, they're in the process of developing the technology to extract DNA from postage stamps. So if you have any old letters, keep them because they'll be able to say you have something from great, great grandma that's been passed down to you. They'll be able to, you send the DNA, the, sorry, you send the, um, the stamp in and hopefully they didn't have their dog lick it or anything you know, that I would do. Um, and they'll be able to extract it and then they can compare your results to that ancestor and say, this is how much you share. And here's all the other people um, who you're related through that person. So that's really fun um, and exciting. A um, thing to know about Ancestry. Ancestry is our go-to company in this country for DNA testing. However, it's not the go-to com company in other countries. If you're looking for um, matches in the UK, you can download your DNA and upload it into the website Find My Past and their database has, um, excuse me, they have, they focus on like the UK. So they'll be able to pinpoint um, where your ancestors came from in particular towns. Um, so you get a really great um, focus. Same thing with MyHeritage. Um, they're primarily based in also Scandinavia, uh, Germany, and they were in France, but France, I think last year outlawed um, DNA to commercial DNA tests because they were causing so many problems amongst families because they were finding out that they had these non-parental events and it was just ruining people's lives. And they were like, that's it. No more. You're done. So um, if you have a family in France, I'm sorry, you're probably not going to be able to get a hold of them. 
So check out uh, the databases that your company is sharing in. Um, now, a thing to know is your genetic family, you have two family trees. You have your genealogy family tree. If you can see right behind me, I have a, a, a photo thing of mine. Plus you also have your genetic family tree. And if you look at this chart, once you get, it's actually your, this chart's a little bit off, um, to your great, great grandparents, you start to lose ge the genetic connection to them. So if you look out here, once you get to these levels, you start losing links to them. Um, so you're not genetically related to all of your ancestors, which is why it's really good to have everybody you know, you know, who's related to you, um, test because they will have um, inherited different pieces from your ancestors. So while I might not be genetically related, my brother may be um, to my ancestors. He's going to get different matches than me. It's also really important that if you have the next living generation that you get them tested. I've been trying to solicit my 91 year old grandfather to take a DNA test. It's really not working out for me right now um, because my father, he has, he's taken a DNA test. He has 50% more matches than I do. My grandfather, if you do the math, will have 50 more percent of my father. Um, so, and then you'll be able to also see when you get your results, who's matching to what side. Um, so that, that's kind of cool. <clears throat> Since I have this new screen share thing, it has like the different buttons in the different places and I'm not used to poking at them. So this is a, if the, there's a delay in here. So this is just kind of a, uh, a breakdown of the percentage that you're going to be inheriting from each individual in your family. And in a way, it's also a way of me kind of um, covering for my horrible math skills because I am not good at math or science. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and again, please feel free to take any pictures of this as you want, screenshots, this, you know, presentations for you. And I'm happy to pass this along uh, to the library to also send out um, the information. So the results are in. Anybody have an idea of, if you're not expecting a surprise parentage you know, situation, where's the first place you people usually go, they wanna look at when they get their results? Anybody have any ideas? I see Mal's moving, but I don't think you're, I think you might be muted. I mean, I looked at the ethnic breakdown immediately. Yeah, you look at the ethnic breakdown. All right, yeah, so that's one of the first things that you look at. Um, now, when Ancestry first started, they tested about 22 regions, okay? So when they launched in 2012, they were comparing people to 22 different regions. And most of those regions were based in uh, Europe, okay? Now they test over a thousand different regions, which is also, I think 23andMe only tests about 200 regions. So that's a big difference. Um, the company like Find My Past, they test less, but they test more focused regions in a particular geographically centered location. Um, now, don't get too attached to your results. Don't get any tattoos or anything like that um, of your results because they're going to change within five months. And I'm gonna show you this. So I took this, this is a screenshot of my uh, results from, What's the point of let me think, probably about last April, okay? And so if you take a look, it says that I'm French, 23%, uh, German, Europe, <clears throat> Italian, Irish, Scotland, Greece, Balkans, Baltic and I'm grouped into the subgroup, the focus group of the Pennsylvania settlers, okay? So now, again, I'm gonna switch over my screen. So let's see what adventure this is gonna bring. I'm gonna stop screen sharing here. Okay, where is that? Okay, now, let me go to my ancestry results. Thank you all for your patience. Okay, here we go. 
So what am I today? And you're, you're going to be just as surprised as I am because um, it changes all the time of what my nationality is. So I'm going to go to my DNA results. Here I am. We have like that suspense where we would have like our commercial break to see what we're going to find. Oh, good. It's not loading. I was worried it might work. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Okay. So today I am heavily Northern Italian. Um, I also have family. I also have Greece and Albania, Scotland. That's new. Um, <laughs> England, Ireland, Eastern European, and Russia, Sweden, German, French, and Spain. Oh, Spain's new too. Look at that. So people I know get really mad actually when they see this because they're like, wait a minute. Like I was told I was German and everything like that. What's going on? Ah. Oh. Good question. <laughs> so um, this is always being changed based on, they say based on the technology and based on the people who are already on ancestry, who are identifying themselves as certain populations. I always notice too, people get like Christmas presents and they're taking their DNA right now. And right now they're getting their DNA back and they're identifying themselves. And based on that, that's also gonna change your DNA results. Um, but check out, look in France. France, I was, uh, what was I on the other one? 23% French, and now I'm only 3% France, you know? And you would think these people were alive and moving around, but they're dead. Um, so again, don't be so attached to this. The thing that they do say is always going, well, always going to stay the same is your additional communities that you're placed into. So here, uh, I'm in the Pennsylvania settlers, big deal. Who cares? <laughs> um, not really exciting, but I do know that. Um, if you check out my father's results, um, I can also, and because I have tested other people in my family, I always go and I check out to see what kind of nationalities are they today um, and break it down that way. And yeah, my father's, and he's Cyprus now. So, you know, you, you, never, you never know what you're gonna get basically. What is important here? Um, is not so much of your ethnicity, but of who you're going to be matched with. That's kind of like the, that's always like the important takeaway. They say, don't really worry about that. Um, and the thing is I go to these genealogy conferences and they have these booths set up where people take your ethnicity and they put it on t-shirts and bags and all this stuff. And I like, well, go, and they probably hate me because I go right next to the people online. I'm like, don't waste your money. It's going to change. Don't buy that product. Um, so, Let's hop back over to screen shares on the screen. Does anybody have any questions, by the way, while I'm doing this? Everybody's so nice and quiet. I wish my kids took a lesson from you guys. <laughs> and it's that on my results, I not only had those regions identified, but I had long uh, arrows pointing from uh, Europe to the United States and from Ireland, which, which is part of my ancestry, down to Australia. And I was curious about those long dotted lines that uh, extended between countries and continents. So did you take a 23andMe result or did you um, a test or did you take Ancestry? I take, uh, we used Ancestry. Really? Okay, because usually those are seen more in the 23andMe um, and that's supposed to note the path of migration that they found. Mm -hmm. And with 23andMe, they will put you in what's called haplogroups based on letters and numbers. Um, and it's supposed to show you the migration that your ancestors took at different times. And since your ancestors, you know, you've got a bunch of them, they're gonna start taking different routes and vary off. Um, and also to where they've also found, so from Australia, um, they found like a subgroup of people that have moved to Australia and migrated that you also match with there. Does that make sense? Yes, thank okay. you. You're welcome. I have a question also. Sure. sure. Um, and I hope I can phrase this correctly because this is all pretty new to me. Sure. Um, I'm not, 
let's see. My siblings and I can have different DNA results. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have that chart that showed that if you have a certain match, then you have the same parents. So if we have different results, how can it show that? Because um, you're still matching in certain, kind of like, just if you think of like different hair, different eye color, um, you know, you'll have different results, uh, but they're, you'll, so for your siblings, you match 75% of their DNA, um, but you'll still have like the, the same parents because you're still getting 50% from each of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's so, not 50% necessarily, I think is the key. But so, did you just uh, it's not like you're getting 50% from your mom and your brother's getting 50% from your mom, but it's not necessarily the same. The same. If you want to think of it, they describe it as think of it as you have vegetable soup. Okay. And everybody, you put your parents DNA in this big pot and they got celery and carrots and whatever. Um, you're put a, you put a ladle in it and you're going to make a kid. Okay. And you pull that ladle out. And some of the kids gonna have more carrots, more celery, whatever. Uh, the next, and now the pot's magic and it kind of puts that same DNA back in the pot. The next person comes, they take a ladle and they're gonna have maybe some peas and I don't, I, I don't cook. I don't really know what goes in this vegetable soup, but you know, whatever. Um, they're gonna have some of the same stuff, some different stuff, a little bit different proportions of it than that. Um, but, you want to, ex unless you're identical twins, um, you are going to have different percentage of ethnicity. Um, your ethnicity will vary from your siblings. So that's totally fine and to be expected. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why it's really important to get everybody tested. Um, another fun thing to know is that one of the, just like how we have recessive traits like red hair and blue eyes, there also seems to be recessive ethnicities that are harder to come through. And Native American is one of the harder ethnicities to be detected. So if you were told that you have Native American ancestry and it doesn't come up on your results, um, that's okay because it's harder to be detected. Um, if it is coming up, that's awesome because that means that you have like some, some strong genes that are peeking through for generations. So congratulations. Um, let me see what else I got here. And I apologize if I'm talking fast. I get really excited about this stuff. So, and I see, uh, are you raising your hand? I think- I have a question, yes. Sure. Just, hop, just in hop in. In the beginning, you said a woman cannot trace her father's line because she Genetic. doesn't have a Y chromosome. She can't trace, so she can't trace the paternal, paternal, paternal line back. Oh. She can, she's still connected to her dad, uh -huh. um, but she won't be able to do that. So one of the things with the paternal line, that's if you want to think of it as you, like your family's surname line. So if you're con uh, testing on say 23 and me, and you're, you're a man and you've tested, you're going to expect to see other people with your same last name coming up as your matches. Whereas if you're a woman testing, um, you're a lot less likely to get those matches. So oh. my maiden name is Gadotti. And I had my sister and my son test for 23 in May. We are not getting any Gadotti matches. Oh. So I'm like, dad, spit in this tube. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's lying or maybe we're just not getting this test. So that's like his next to-do list because I'm always giving him, you know, tasks of do this with your DNA. Uh -huh. um, Thank you. Sure. Any other questions before we move on to the next thing? Something in the chat, I think you might've covered it. Which oh, is sure, let's see. Uh, what is the subcategory? What is the subcategory? So if you see here, it says for me, Oh, wait, this is my dad. Let's go back to me. And my, my, I have my aunt in here also. You're seeing like my um, results, right? I think that's what you're seeing. I just want to make sure I'm in the right thing. So my aunt, should, I think she has a different, oh, she is the same as me. So when it says additional communities, this is my maternal aunt. 
your additional communities, those are your subcategories where they say that you're heavily from and that's not really going to change. Like I know that I'm from Pennsylvania settlers. I have a bunch of my mom's family who lives out there. Um, this is really not telling me anything I don't know. But on my husband's side, I believe he's pegged over in Ireland for some of his subcategories. So that's cool. Um, now, a lot of times people see this and they're like, all right, awesome. Glad I just paid $100 to see this, but you're not done yet. There's a ton more stuff to be discovered. So I'm um, going to hop back over here to my screen share, which is what I was originally doing. And then I got distracted because I love talking. Um, so let's go to my presentation. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I think I got to do. Hold on. I have to hit this button. So you buy these extra screens because you think that it's going to be helpful and then it's just super confusing. Okay, let's do this. And Live and grow in time, let's see. There. All right. Okay. Whew, my heart's racing. It's so exciting. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so we covered that. So understanding and making the most of your matches. So you'll notice in one of your categories in Ancestry, you're going to have a bunch of matches and people get intimidated by this. So this is a screenshot of my matches right here. And you'll notice here that it does say right here, centimorgans, okay, the CMs, not centimeters. And when two people share a DNA match, they inherit DNA from one or more common ancestors. And the length of that DNA that they have in common is estimated in centimorgans. The higher the number, the closer the relationship. Now, ancestry will show you the centimorgan, that scientific way of doing it. 23andMe doesn't tell you that, it just tells you how many segments that you share. And 23andMe also has a cool feature called DNA Painter, um, which was originally a person had their own company and they kind of teamed up with 23andMe. And you can actually look at all your chromosomes and see um, you know, how you match up and where you match up with people. And I guess if you know science and you know certain genes are on certain chromosomes, um, you can kind of figure that out. But that's for like really hardcore people and that's not me. Um, so I just go right with the regular centimorgans here. So you'll see down here, uh, they're going to also give you predicted um, <clears throat> estimates. Okay, so here's my aunt, I have her um, results and they do say that she's a close family member. This is my cousin. Um, again, I made her take a DNA test. And then I also have my second cousins. So those are my mom's um, first cousins right here. Now, if I click on this, so I'm gonna, these two brothers, Jeff Young and Joe Young, I know both of them. Um, I click on that. It's showing me also to based on, mm -hmm. this is the possible relationships they think that Jeff and I could oh. share. Um, they believe that's 51% that it's right here. Now think to think about, is consider the age of the person um, and the likelihood of that happening. It's very likely, very, sorry. It's very unlikely that Jeff Young is my great grandparent based on his age, based on my age. Um, you'll see some here, you know, and if you think about it, you'll see like this person could possibly be your great, great, great grandmother. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, like if your great, great grandmother's alive and she's taking a DNA test, like she needs to be on the news, God bless her. Um, so you got to kind of think rationally of what could this person actually be to you? So they're giving you the different percentages based on the possible centimorgans. Um, another way of looking at this is understanding your cousins. This is like one of those fun facts at a dinner party when someone says, I don't know how they're related, but I think they're related this way. This is a chart that tells you um, how you're related to each of these individuals and what portion of DNA you're going to share with them, okay? Not that important. And by the way, you can find all these charts on the website, the genetic genealogist, because I stole them. Um, so these just show you 
of the percent of DNA that you're sharing with these individuals. Okay. And another way of looking at that is, where are you mouse? Um, is possible <clears throat> set to mortgage relationship. So I'll get a calls. Sometimes they're like these frantic calls and these people that say, I just got a DNA test. And I think my, I found like somebody who could be my brother, you know, and I say, okay, let's look at your match. And we're looking at their Santa Morgans and because they're Santa Morgans, maybe they say, okay, I found somebody, I think he could be my brother. Um, he has five, him and I share 500 Santa Morgans. So I go right here and I'm like, listen, I'm going to stop you right there because your brother, if possible, would only possibly be sharing this many centimorgans. Um, couldn't even be a half sibling, it would be there. Uh, could be a half nephew or niece. So we would look at all the different options of your, so this is the average of, where's my mouse? The average centimorgan, that's weird. It keeps us, oh, hold on. My video is right in the way. Um, <clears throat> your average that you're getting and the possible um, where your center mortgage could be to have that relationship. So always consider that when you're looking at your matches and you're trying to figure that out. Um, this is just another match way of looking at it, the different clusters you can have based on the percentages. Again, don't go crazy copying this down. I'll send you it. any questions so far. Everyone looks really deep in thought because I just threw some like academics at you. <laughs> Don't get intimidated. So let's talk about how to organize your DNA matches because you're going to get a lot of them. And ancestry, this is one of those like you either are going to hate it or you're going to love it. And I'm totally up on the fence right now. They have denounced, denounced, they have announced that in the next few months, they're going to be eliminating 80% of your matches. That's a lot of matches. Um, so they said that because they have a lot of people that are not good matches, they're not close enough matches, which sounds good unless you're really trying to go yeah. further back into time because that kind of screws things up. Um, they say that your matches are very accurate up to the fourth generation of ancestors. Okay, so once you get past five generations, it starts to become a little cloudy where you may not really be directly related to somebody. Um, they may be a brother of somebody um, that you might be sharing with. It might be the next door neighbor who they've, you know, kind of inbred and traded off wives and goats over the years. Um, so your relationship could be kind of close to them. Um, so <clears throat> a way of organizing your matches and ancestry said, if you color code your matches or you make any notes, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, uh, they're not going to touch your matches those particular mm. matches, those are yours. So if you are like me and you need to like hoard these people who you've never met before, you're just gonna start color coding, okay? But I'm gonna show you a way how to do that and like not, you know, be like, what the heck did I just do? So let's go, oh, before I do this, talk about this. So why am I gonna bother what's called color coding my matches? Well, it's gonna save time because you're gonna be able to see, I looked at this person already. Um, and it's also going to help you kind of break down brick walls by clustering people together. And it's one of those parlor tricks where if you have somebody on Ancestry who contacts you and you say, we're a match, how are we related? By going to your color coding system, you'll be able to figure that out and tell them within like a few minutes. And they're like, how did you do that? Sorcery. Um, so now let me go back to my thing here and thank you all for your patience of dealing with me while I'm figuring out my screens. Go away. How the heck? Okay, this may be a disaster. I don't know what, what's going together. Okay, I, that wasn't a disaster as I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, can everybody see nothing? Cool. Hold on. Let's do this again. Okay. Everybody see my screen here? My big messy desktop. That's good. Good. Okay. Let's go over here. So now they say if you have 
tested the generation above you. Maybe you've tested both your parents to don't even bother working from your parent, um, yourself work from your parents. Oh. Um, so let's go to DNA and I'm going to go to my DNA summary results. And I'm going to go to, I always forget who I have the most color coding with. Because this is like the stuff that I do when I'm supposed to be doing other things like the laundry. I sit and color code my DNA matches. And then I tell my husband, I've been very busy all day and I didn't have time to do housework. <laughs> kind of caught onto my antics. All right. So here's my page. I have no idea who these people are, especially this lady who looks like she, Tina Parton, looks like she went for a glamour shots. Okay. Let's check it out. Okay, so actually I don't want mine. I want my aunt's because she has a little bit more. So what I did was I color code people by their closest ancestors or the furthest back and I'm sorry, the closest ancestors that I share with my match. So you always want to start with the people who you know. And I know it sounds a little silly because you're like, who cares? I already know Aunt Gertrude, but color code her anyway, because um, that's going to help you out. So I know my, these are not my first cousins. These are actually my second cousins. And Stressory is wrong here. So <clears throat> these are my mom's cousins. And you can go into here, next to here, and you can go into add groups. Okay. And there, our closest ancestors that we share, the last name is Baker and Warner. So I've created these groups and you can create a custom group based on that. And if you really like somebody, you can create a star match for them. Closest. Yeah, so it's the closest ancestor. So um, if, in other words, Nadine and I, um, her grandparents are my great grandparents. Okay, so that's our closest ancestors that we share. So their last names are Baker and Warner. Okay, so that's why I put them in that group and I made up a color. And they think Ancestry gives you 24 colors to choose from. And all these people, we share the Baker and Warner connection. And again, here you see Baker and Warner. And I'll show you why I did that. Um, going down here, this person we share um, it's my, not that you really care, but it's my great, great grandparents are their great grandparents. So our closest relatives are the Cruises and the Warners. Okay. So I've made that match. So you can kind of go through this. Um, and because as I, I mentioned, I have everybody's thing. So I kind of jump around with my color coding. So you can hopefully spend a little bit more time. Um, so I'll tell you a thing so you can do here. So say I go to, I don't know who McKay, no, yes, I do. Um, let me pick somebody if I say I don't know. Okay, so say I go to Kathleen Perkins, okay? And who is, Kath, how is Kathleen Perkins related to me? She doesn't have a tray. Hmm. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna click on her. And I'm going to look at her shared matches. And I could tell right away, based on our color coding, yeah. that our share, our closest matches are going to be the McKee and Paul family. Okay. So I, I always like I always like to do this when um, as I mentioned, when I have those people who are asking how are we related, I can just go to them right away and I can see them pop up. Um, and then I can check out these other people's tree because that kind of gives me an indication of them, of where they're coming from. Another good thing with color coding mm. is um, my aunt, and now I have it, <clears throat> before these, up, these last few updates with Ancestry, my aunt had um, high, high Swedish content, you could say. And I had no idea where my aunt was getting Swedish ancestry from because her family comes back from colonial times and I've traced them back there um, and I wasn't finding it. 
So what I started to do is I started to look at who is related to my aunt that's also sharing a Swedish connection with her. So I went to, I started at the first cousin line and I'm gonna check out Nadine. And I made a note to myself that they have a Swedish connection and I can go to her ethnicity and I could see, ah, Nadine and Ann Carol both have a Swedish connection. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean now she could have it from her other, you know, her, her father's father, whatever. She could also be sharing it, but that's a big clue that it's gonna be coming from that side of the family. And I'm then going to also see, okay, maybe it's Nadine's dad, maybe he's Swedish. But these guys who are brothers here, um, and she's actually, there was, it's one of those stories where like my grandpa was one of 12 and three of his siblings married three other siblings. Um, like some weird case. It wasn't incest. My mom keeps telling me that, whatever. Uh, she's like, they're fine. So anyway, I checked out all their DNA and they too had Swedish ancestry coming down more. This is also my second cousin. I had checked his DNA and he too shares Swedish ancestry. This is my buddy, Darren, him and I, he's the one who got me started in genealogy. So we talk about this all the time. Um, and what I did keep going, I kept going back and back and I was tracing people, Swedish connection. Um, I'm gonna go into the next generation. Um, I'm now into my great, 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 great grandparents. And what I'm going to actually find out, you know, I'm going through all here, that it's um, my great, great, great grandfather, his line that came from England. And I could trace them back to England. And then I'm like, what happened? Well, one day my son and I were watching some show about history and um, it was talking about how the Vikings came over and pillaged uh, parts of England. And so I'm like, yes, like that's what happened. Like we were part of a Viking raid. This is how we were made. I'm telling my son, he's like super excited. He's five years old. He has no idea what I'm talking about, but like he's really excited that he's a Viking too. Um, but that's how I figured that out. And you know, if you know your history, it'll kind of help you out with that. So that's a way of going in there um, and kind of solving some mysteries. If you're not quite sure where your ethnicity is coming from, look at those color coded matches, see who else is matching with you. And then when your results change and you did all this hard work, you can be really sad, but now you know, these are all these people I relate to. Um, any questions so far about that? No? Hi, um, I have Hi. a question. Hi, um, earlier you said that uh, you can't trace your uh, paternal uh, DNA unless you can test a male uh, on your father's side. Did I understand that properly? You can't trace the paternal, paternal, paternal line. You can still trace your dad. Um, okay. You won't be able to trace all the way back to mitochondrial Adam. Okay. The question though is if you have no surviving males, um, how do you go about, I mean, you know, how do you go about testing? I mean, I'm, I, you know, I don't, my dad is deceased. Mm -hmm male cousins are de deceased, um, his cousins, you know, I mean, my father would be well over a hundred now, he'd be about 110. So, um, I mean, how unfortunately that would be considered like, well, you would consider that like the end of the line. However, if you go on ancestry and you're finding these people, maybe they're, you know, a few generations out, um, mm -hmm. and they're connecting on your father's line, you can ask them, say, hey, have you taken an ancestry test? I'm sorry, have you taken a 23andMe test? Mm -hmm. you know, I think you're connected okay. that way. And would you mind sharing with me those results? I see. Um, and you could do it uh, that way. And you can test, um, you could test a brother, correct? Yep. The brother, okay. All yep. right, good. Thank you so much. You're welcome very much. <laughs> Pretty uh, soon we'll be able to test postage stamps though, right? So if yeah. you yes. Yep. So save your postage stamps. Yep. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, you're, you're ex absolutely right. Um, so all is not lost. So um, let's hop over to, I want to make sure I covered everything on here. Okay. 
Um, any other questions while I switch my screens here? One more, yes. Sure, when, yeah, go for it. when will the postage stamp <laughs> be a thing? Be a, be a, a, a way to. Uh, to he said, in, well, this was last year, which they said three years. Um, the big thing, so this is also a fun thing for everybody to do who's interested in genealogy. Um, there's a big conference, Roots Tech. And that's like, if you've heard of like Comic-Con for people who like comics, it's kind of like that for people who are into genealogy and you just like totally nerd out. Um, it's really great. It's in Salt Lake City. I've been able to go the last two years I work at it because of the pandemic, it's canceled. I shouldn't say that. It's all online now. So speakers from all over the world who are the top in their field um, are teaching classes online. It's totally free. It's the last week in February. And at that conference, that's when they announce all the big changes that are happening in the world of genealogy. That's also that week you're going to see a lot of changes in your DNA results. Um, new rollouts, they'll have new programs you can check on um, for ancestry, for anything that's related to, to your genealogy that's the time to do it. So something about like the postage stamps that could be uh, announced at that time period. And my okay. hope for next year is that I get to teach at Roots Tech. So it's fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> you said end of January or? Um, it's at the end of February. And February, just, sorry. Okay. On that, yeah. So it's called Roots Tech, R-O-O-T-S-T-E-C. H. I was an English teacher and I'm the worst speller in the world. Um, so Roots Tech, you can go online, you can register for free and you can go and it's, the sessions are also being recorded. So if you don't watch them live because they're happening at all the times in the time zones, um, you can pick the ones that you want to watch and watch them all year. So fun. yeah. Um, boop, 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 boop. Okay, let's go to this for a second. Okay, oh man, I'm getting used to this. All right, now. A next fun little bit to play around with with Ancestry is through line. Anybody has anybody used through lines on Ancestry? No. No. One of my favorites. Okay, so in order to get the most out of through lines, or even to use through through, I just want to say through lines. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, through lines. There's a couple things you have to do. You have to have taken an Ancestry DNA test because you can't just go on there and be like, "Show me my DNA." and you're not that entitled. Um, so take a DNA test, number one. Number two, you have to go into your settings and opt to see and be seen by your DNA matches. So you can't be private. Then you also have to link your family tree. So when you say where you see those do not have a family tree, those people are not gonna be showing up on your, um, your through lines. Um, you can make sure that your linked family tree then is, you can still have a private tree, but you have to make it so it's searchable. Okay. So it's searchable. They would be able to ask, ask you, can I see your family tree? You'd have to grant them access to it. Um, and then you have to then <clears throat> build your family tree back at least four generations to really kind of make the most of it. I mean, you could get away with like the Basically the people in your family tree, you have to have one generation above you at least deceased, okay? Um, so that's important to know. And then it's gonna take 48 hours to upload itself and reboot it. The bigger your tree, the better results you're going to get. So um, let's, now an important thing to know is that <clears throat> um, you, your tree is only going to be as accurate. I'm sorry, your through lines results are only going to be as accurate as the other people sharing that information, okay? So don't think that you just got this magic button that's gonna show you the most accurate things. You're still seeing other people's trees. And although other people have good intentions, they often do make mistakes. So you gotta do your own homework. Um, so let's check out through lines and how to use it. So, I always say you should treat other people's trees like Wikipedia. Yes. As a starting point, not the end of your research. Exactly. They say in like Ancestry World that X doesn't always mark the spot. 
in DNA. Like it's supposed to be like a little joke for the science people out there. It's just a clue. Um, you always got to do your own homework. XY doesn't always mark the spot. I forget the joke, but that's what it is. So hop on over to here. Boom, three lines. Okay, these are my parents, but I don't want to look at my test right now. I want to look at my husband's tests because he has a little bit more interesting stuff. So my husband had a mystery Greek grandfather that I may or may not ruined a few people's lives in the process of trying to find this because he did have living descendants and I had to call them and say like, hey, guess what? Your grandpa had another family. But, but the, my kids are cute. Like, <laughs> um, so these are my husband's parents, okay? These are my husband's great grandparents here, okay? Now I knew that his grand... <laughs> I knew that my husband's um, <clears throat> great grandfather was named Jacob Geiger. Okay, so I was able to put that into here and then his line had stopped for me. However, with through lines, I'm able to click on this. Okay. And I'm able to see this other person who tested, um, these other people who had tested that are also related to the same gentleman. And I was able to call this lady here and I told her, you know, I'm related. Um, my husband's related. We have this mystery great grandfather. Um, you know, what can you tell me? And I've been able to reach out to all these different people who, if it wasn't for through lines, I wouldn't have known that they were there. And now a little story too about the accuracy of your tree and kind of guessing at it. So my husband's aunt, my husband's aunt um, had told me that her great grandmother, this Jacob Geiger's guy, hey buddy, um, that her mother's name was Pauline, okay? Hey bud, awesome. my, husband, my son just came up from his birthday party at school. Um, told me that Jacob Geiger's, um, or no, what was it? I think it was, i say Pauline, okay? That her, her mother's name was Pauline. So here I am, I'm looking through all these records, I'm writing Pauline on everything, I'm writing to people, you know, do you know who Pauline is? So a couple of years later, I'm talking to my husband's aunt and she starts hysterically laughing and she was like, oh, remember that time I told you that Jacob's mother's name was Pauline? Well, actually it was my mother had a collie and that was the name of the dog. <laughs> I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, <laughs> so. I had to go back and change everything. And I'm like, man, like, so oh, here I am looking for this like Shetland sheepdog. I'm not going to find it on Ancestry. But anyway, do your own homework. Um, so Jacob Geiger, I was able to go in here through through lines. They were able to show me the other people who had tested. Um, and I could then find that information <clears throat> and reach out to them. Okay. Also with through lines. And I'm almost done. I know I'm going over time a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, if you're going through here, it's going to start suggesting people and your suggestions are going to be, um, a lot of times they'll be in green or sometimes if somebody has, I don't think they have it here, added a picture like, oh, in this case, um, it's gonna have a dotted line around it. So where you see a dotted line or green, that is who they believe you are related to based on your matches. Okay, so it believes that uh, my husband's related to this guy, Job Daniels. And these are the other matches who he's related to by this side. Oh, this, this is actually very interesting. I haven't seen this. Um, so now I can go and I can check out this person's tree and look at her records and see if in fact I am related to this individual. So that's a way of using family tree um, and through lines. Now, another way of using through lines as a problem solver, and we're going to talk about ethnicity. And I hate this because this screwed up my example. So on my husband's side, he has, oh, see that Helene Pauline, this is, that was the actual right name. I forgot what the collie's name was, but that's the, the right name. So my husband had this uh, lady, Jane slash Jenny Bell, and they weren't sure if she was from Ireland or from Germany. Okay. Now 
The caveat here is when I started doing this, it said Ireland. Okay, so I'm going with Ireland. I don't know what it's going to be right now. If it's gonna say that they're gonna match through German or they're gonna match through Irish. So you can connect, you can go on here, okay? So I'm going to check out <clears throat> all these other people that Jane Bell um, has tested who identify themselves as her descendants. So this Resmond, Res MD1, let's click on her and let's check out her ethnicity that we, sh my husband and her have. Um, now, when I had done this originally, they didn't share anything from Germany. They had only shared Ireland and it was about the same, okay? So they were matching on the Irish side. Now, if I go back, so you have to catch ancestry just at the right time to get what you want. Oh, I don't know what I did. Sorry about that. Oh, boo. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay. Now, if I go over here, I could check this lady out. And her ethnicity, they share a lot of with Ireland, okay? And then the other person also was Ireland. So prior to this, they, she, they weren't matching at all with Germany. Um, so I had come to the conclusion that this woman, Jenny Bell, was in fact Irish based on the shared ethnicity with my husband with his matches. So that's kind of cool. Um, now the last thing, and I don't even know if this is still on here because they may or may, oh, they did, it's still on here. Okay, so this is like the newest feature that Ancestry has, and I kind of hate it because um, I feel like it's just gonna tell you lies, is this. The personal, where is it? Oh, did they get rid of it? They might've gotten rid of it because it was just, let's see. It was the story bot. And actually I don't even see it here. Yeah, I think they might've gotten rid of it. Um, it was in a beta testing, which was like a trial testing. I don't That's know if- personal discoveries project. To get, to get back, the personal discoveries is uh, answering questions about yourself. Um, like, do you snore? Um, you know, so that they can, as I mentioned before, they're going to try to get, be like 23andMe and give you health questions. So by filling this out, you're helping them create a database of sample population to create like this health um, screening for people to sign up for Ancestry. Now, a month ago, it was also offering StoryBot. And I hated StoryBot because StoryBot was telling you all these famous people that you were related to that you weren't. It told me that I was related to Abraham Lincoln. Um, I know for a fact that I am not. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And like, as a genealogist, like you just wanna like bash your head against the wall. I met this one guy who started telling me that he was convinced that he was a direct descendant of Charlemagne. And he told, then told me that like Charlemagne spoke his name himself. And I'm like, how the heck do you know that? Um, but it's just like, if you just want to just look at nonsense, look at StoryBot. Otherwise just forget about it. Um, so yeah, so any questions? I think that's all I have. Oh, let me go back to my screen here. Is it? Yeah. There's a show on uh, PBS called Finding Your Roots. Of course, yeah, yeah. Henry Louis Gates. You have any, yeah, I, I watch it regularly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about it? Yeah, actually that's kind of what I do with Legacy Tree. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, they, yeah, I mean, I like it. Um, th they do a really great job of presenting the information. Um, the, that binder that they give them um, is magnificent. And don't expect that when you do go to like a regular genealogy company, because you'll be disappointed. Uh, the narratives. What's that? You're well, always going to get a narrative the way that they present on that show, where you get like basically low story biographies. Like that's not always accessible for most people. Right. Like, and especially too, like I'm just doing a research project for an individual. Um, and, you know, in the American records, you can get a lot more information based on the time period. Once you go back into Europe, you know, I had 
15 pages of American records explaining it, going through it. But once you get back into these Italian records, it's kind of like, okay, how much information can you actually really get out of that? And um, it does come a lot of, you know, I had found this information about the, back in the 1930s, this couple had eloped. So I just researched, you know, the area of why, you know, why they might do that, why they might choose, choose this location in Maryland to elope when they were from New Jersey. Um, so kind of gathering that information. It's all part of the puzzle. And really that's what, that's what if, if you don't consider yourself as genealogy as a hobby, because if you think about it, people are so much more than their just names and death dates and birth dates and places. It's really about putting them in a historical context um, and learning about that, what's going on and seeing those people as um, individuals. I had out of my family and figured out that my great, great grandfather came to this country. He left his first wife in Italy. He came here and he got married to another lady while he was still married. And she came over um, and I guess she was just pissed off at him and all the records kind of like have this back and forth. So anyway, I started like writing like this, you know, I was bored. So I started writing this little narrative about how to kill your husband. And my husband found it. <laughs> He's like, what is this? And I was like, oh, I was like, it's like a little story I made. It's from like the 1880s. And he was like, he's like, okay, I found it like in this notebook. And I got like really nervous. And it's about like, well, about like catching a fair. So it's really kind of just putting somebody into context, putting those records together and making a story about them. Any other comments or questions or anything? I, I thank you everybody for coming. Yeah. Um, one more question. So going back to the best way to search for Italian um, and maybe some Greek records, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do all of this, of course, on Ancestry. Um, do you have any other recommendations? I know you mentioned some European. Yep, ab uh, absolutely. Um, for Italian records, the Italian State Archives is available for free online. And I'm going to put it in the chat. And okay. I might spell it wrong, so I apologize for that immediately. Um, it's called. And Family Search, by the way, is always free. Family Search is the free version of Ancestry. And what's really cool about BAM. Oh, my chat's over here. Hello. <laughs> over on this screen. Um, family Search is based in Salt Lake City and they've taken all the microfilm that they've collected from all over the world and they've already put that online this past year um, and that's going to be available um, for you to look at your house so you don't have to go all the way from to Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, which is really cool. Um, so and I have it in my website, Antonati. I believe it's called. It's the Italian website, Antonanti. Um, that's the Italian archives and also Family Search, which is always free, as I just mentioned. Um, Click on the map on the search. Um, Kira, do we have any more programs scheduled? I can't even remember. We've got a few more coming up. Um, there's going to be one in February, 326, the same time uh, that's going to be on census records. Okay. And doing one in March that's going to be completely based on um, looking for women specifically in your family tree. Uh, so please, uh, the signups are on our calendar. I've also put my email in the chat. So if you'd like a copy of the presentation or you want a link to the recording of this, uh, shoot me an email um, and I will get it to you. And I do uh, classes all, all the time with different topics. So if you go on, if you're on Facebook, you can um, go to my Facebook page and like it, and then you should be able to see. Um, yeah, oh, oh, sorry, I just read that in the chat. I got excited. Um, you can be able to see when I have these other classes. So let's hop over to, I'm gonna show you real fast how to upload your DNA. No, it's good. Um, okay, are you seeing this? You're seeing this, right? Yeah. Yes. Ancestry, okay. So. You want to go to your DNA results summary. So in the DNA, it's the, in the settings for DNA. It's not the settings for ancestry. 
Okay, so you're gonna go to settings and then you're gonna go down to the bottom, all the way down and it says download DNA data. Okay, and then you click on that and it's gonna download a really big file and don't even bother opening because it's just A, G, T, C's, whatever. Um, but you're gonna take that and then what you can do is go to a site like, oh, and you can't, you can't put, you can't put your ancestry DNA on 23andMe and you can't put your 23andMe DNA on ancestry. However, you can do it to my find my past and my heritage. Okay, so you don't have to buy the kits. Um, so here's the website, find my past. Okay, if you go down here, it will say DNA testing. And then it says, upload your DNA test. Um, and you can do it from any company and you can get your matches that way. And they believe it's like $30 to unlock the results. Also, if you want to get more ancestry tests, maybe you want to test family members, whatever. If you go on eBay, um, you can get them for like 50% off and they're not used, which people ask me all the time. So, cause who wants somebody else's used test? That's so weird. Especially, especially in COVID times. <laughs> and it has also been pointed out to me that uh, to keep an eye on like, especially family type holidays, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, mm -hmm. because ancestry will often offer deals around those times. Yep. Uh, so if you're looking to get a discount, they often will throw a 20% off here and there. So. Which is also really good if you have like a secret Santa and the limit's like $100 and you get someone a DNA test for discount. And you're like, oh yeah, I spent $100, but really you spent 50. Then you can buy yourself something nice. Mm -hmm. I also do that a lot. Um, any other questions about how I save money or <laughs> just just a, a general question, please? Do you know the um, 1950 census records are due to be released? I do. They are due in 2022. 22. And again, like. If you want to see people go crazy, go to a genealogy conference in the year of a census record, and it's like, who's ready for the 1950 census? And you're like, ah! like really weird. It's like going like girls at a Beatles concert. We wrote something in the show. Um, any other questions? Where do we go to find out um, the Roots Tech um, conference like meetings? Yeah, if you go on Family Search, that website mm -hmm. I just put in the chat, it'll have mm -hmm. a right. I should have a banner that says um, "Register for Roots Tech Connect." Yep. And Thank you. You have to look that way. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? You guys have been great. Uh, really appreciate you know, Kira. Thanks for setting this up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll send a, a lot. And uh, I don't have the uh this kind of expertise on the dna stuff specifically so this has been really wonderful oh great great i like to pretend that i do so <laughs> all right everybody well everybody have a wonderful day thank you so much for uh for coming for hanging out with me um and hopefully i'll see you all again soon next month i believe so february 26th uh, you can go to our website and sign up thank you guys so much uh, and like I mentioned before, just email me if you'd like a copy. I'll get the presentation from Sarah um, and we'll have it up on the YouTube at some point and I can send a link out for that as well. Um, and I'm always around to call or email if you have any other questions. And thank you so much, Sarah. It was really wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Sarah. All right, guys, have a great thank night. Thank you. Bye-bye.